This is the world's first ever 3D printed biofilter. Well, I'd like to think so anyway. I've been waiting for a long time to print one of these. I have two of them currently running, the white box and the blue box. Currently they're supporting a 100 liter sea aquarium with about six clownfish. The water values are perfect. They're, it's converting NO2 into NO3 and everybody's alive and healthy. Let me show you how it works. So here I have one in the green and it consists of several compartments and it's going from down over the wall, under the wall, over the wall, under the wall you can see the holes. So it's going up and down and up and down. And now the exit. Show, show you how it works. Put on the tab. Slowly fill up. Going under the wall. Let me, let me do it slowly. Yeah, it's going out the exit now a little bit, but never mind that. See, it's going over the wall, filling the next compartment. There's it going under. And going over. So, I filled them with Aheim Bio pellets and filter pellets. Go a little bit faster and wait for it to come on the other end. So that'll take a little bit. So what a biofilter does is transporting the water through a filter media, preferably with a large surface Usually you create this large surface by taking a very porous substance, porous material, and uh, the bacteria that convert NO2 into NO3 will be in that porous material or on the large surface. And the, the, the trick is to get a lot of air with this material. That's why sea aquariums have an open filter. There it's coming out the end. Right there. So saltwater aquariums, they need an open filter so a lot of air can get to the filter material. And it's best just to run the water along the filter material as fast as possible. And you want the water to touch as much of the filter material as possible. That's why you need the biofilter to have sections where it, the water must go down and must come up like a sewing needle up and down through the filter material. 3D printing is of course absolutely fantastic for this technology because you can completely design it to your specifications. You want a large, you want small, you want high, you want low. You can check the water movement, you can adapt your design, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, the, the NO2 material, the nit, nitrates, so let's call it, is very toxic to fish. So the NO2 must be converted to NO3, which is not so toxic. And it all comes in the water by the means of the food that is degraded. So sooner or later, it'll, it'll stack up. Now, um, the biofilter is green. You see uh, a color of green, which comes, which lets me to rule number two in 3D printing, which is never 
print your design the first time in the right color you want. So you should have some kind of bulk color where you have a lot of it. And always print your design in your bulk color first. And when you're satisfied with design, then only choose the right color. Otherwise, the changing of material will take you a lot of time. You run out of your color. And it's just a lot of hassle. So currently I have the, the green color in, a, in some kind of bulk material. And when you're satisfied, then you choose your right colors. So you can, you can be, always be confident you have a little bit left of the right color you need. Uh, that, was, that is rule number two I devised for 3D printing. There's a rule number one, of course, there are a lot of rules. Rule number one, I will talk about in my next video because it's quite appropriate to that, to that design. Um, I'm quite satisfied this compartment is a little too small. When you turn on the tap higher, it overfloats. So I think it will accommodate my pump speed, but it's a little bit uh, too close. So I want this compartment to be a little bit larger and it'll make the walls a little bit lower. And one of the big advantages of a biofilter with up and down compartments is that you don't need each compartment to lower your height of your walls, which you would need when you don't have an up and down system and you only have standing up straight walls, you will need to lower each compartment wall. Otherwise the water will just flow right over all of the compartment and never reach the filter material that is down on the bottom. Now don't make it too high. You need a lot of air in the water near the filter system. So you it should be quite shallow. And what I devised actually is a pumping system that I will talk about in one of my videos. Whereby I will have a pump running continuously with the filter water going into this biofilter and putting it in back into the sump. So I'll have a continuous flow in the sump running around the biofilter and I will have a separate flow transferring the water from the sump to the aquarium with a pulsating pump system. And the advantage of that is that you don't need a hole in the bottom of your aquarium. And the advantage of that is that you don't need to make a special aquarium with holes in the bottoms and compartments and difficult ceiling but I will talk about that uh, later. But currently, I'm quite happy with this biofilter. So, with that, this was Printer World. Copy and improve if you can.